Hi, I'm Claudia Brown Coulter with Brownie Culture. I'm a divorce mediator and I help you create a customized divorce that you can uncouple consciously and respectfully. Today we're talking about should you stay or should you go? It's not uncommon for me to get emails and phone calls saying you will never believe what happened last night or two weeks ago. I'm done. I, I can't stand her anymore. I can't stand him anymore. I need out of this marriage. And they're so upset, understandably so, based on whatever has happened, that they are not thinking clearly. Not that they're not thinking correctly, but their thinking is not clear enough because their emotions are not calm enough. And so you make the best emotions when you're clear and level headed. So I'll usually tell them, okay, well, take some time to think about that, you know whatever you need to do to find some peace, even if it's just for a few minutes, so that you can really contemplate the results of your actions and how you wanna go about that. So here are some things, if you are thinking, you know, my marriage is at a crossroads, it's, there are some things that have happened, maybe there's been um, a betrayal, and betrayal comes in many different forms. Yes, there's a physical betrayal, but there, there's also an emotional betrayal, a financial betrayal, um, there are many, many things that can happen in a marriage that can cause one person to just say, this is not the place I want to be anymore. So, and, and, you know, it's very, very easy to get married. It's not as easy to get divorced. So I want you to really think about these things and take the time that you need to consider your next steps. So the first thing you need to consider is if you're going to, if you think that you might stay, the first question is, can I forgive and not hold on to resentment? That's not gonna be immediate because forgiveness is in layers and true forgiveness, um, it takes a while to get there. And you have to let go of resentment and bitterness. And you know you do that when you no longer wish them to fall off a cliff, um, <laughs> you, you're like, live and let live. So you have to let go of that resentment. That is not easy. It's easy to do when you're not in a relationship with them. But if you're going to be in a relationship with them and wake up next to them every morning, whew, that's hard, not impossible, but challenging. The other question you need to ask yourself is, is it safe for me to stay? Is it safe for me emotionally? Is it safe for me physically? Is it safe for me spiritually? Are all of these things, is this a healthy environment where I as an individual can thrive, right? Because a marriage is made up of two individuals. It's not made up of two individuals who become one individual and then that only that one, and then one person takes over and then it's just all about them. No, you're both value, valuable. The things you bring to this earth, to this life, are meaningful. And if you're in a marriage where that is squashed down, that may not be the most healthy thing for you. If you're someone, and I know people like this, who they just cannot be alone. They have a long-term relationship, they break up and they're right back into another one, or they're married and then they get divorced and they're right back into another one. If you are that type of person, then you need to ask yourself if you're going, but I can't stand to be alone. So I, and I'm not going to have an affair because I'm not going to like jump from him to him. No, no, no. I, I need clean break. So, but, uh, so, but I don't want to end this because I don't want to be alone because I'm getting older and I don't know if anybody will want me. And, you have to ask yourself, first of all, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. You have to ask yourself, can your health stand for you to be together? Right? So before we asked, is it safe emotionally, physically, spiritually? Now I'm asking you, is it healthy? Is it healthy mentally? Is it healthy physically? Are you being someone else in your mind when you're there? Are you unable to think clearly and level-headed? Is it safe, but is it healthy as well? Now, there are many instances of people who are mid-divorce and just go, no, they're in mediation. 
we don't want this anymore. We've, we've had this experience. We understand one another. We've learned how to resolve our conflicts. We don't want to get a divorce anymore. Or you can stop the divorce. This is great. Now, listen, if you've had a physical betrayal in your marriage, it is very, very difficult to overcome, but it can be done. And many, many people that I know personally have gone through this and have overcome. And they have stronger marriages now than before when the before the betrayal happened. But here's two things that they have in common. Okay, so the first thing, the person who did the betraying, and I'm I'm not saying him because women can betray too. And if you're in a same-sex marriage, then okay then. So the person who has done the betraying, they have they've had that affair. They have worked to repair the harm beyond just i'm sorry i'm sorry is the beginning and the fact of the matter is is that you if you've had the affair the you've worked really hard to get to the point to admit it to come clean and to be honest and so when you say you're sorry you expect yourself to be like okay i forgive you if your spouse is just now realizing this for the first time they don't want nothing to do with you. So you need to expect that. So, but I'm sorry is just the beginning. The, the spouse who had the affair, then there are actions behind I'm sorry. Right? Because words are great, but they're cheap. So you have to put actions behind your words to repair the harm. And like prolonged action, six months to a year to repair that harm, to rebuild that trust. Now, the other thing they have in common, the second thing they have in common is the betrayed spouse has to work on forgiveness and letting go of resentment, like I spoke about at the beginning. And that's not easy. So the person who had the affair, they finally work up their nerve and they're they finally come clean and they feel better about themselves. But the person who was betrayed, you've just gutted them emotionally. And it's gonna take some time for them to recover. So they, they it will take some time for them to work on forgiveness and letting go of resentment. But these people, these men and women who have been betrayed and they've chosen to stay in their marriage because their spouse is working to repair the harm, well, these betrayed spouses, they also put plans and systems in place to keep themselves safe emotionally and physically. You need to be, if you're married, you shouldn't have to be go getting, you know, STD tests. That's not safe emotion, that physically or emotionally, but definitely physically, right? You need to, they have plans in place to make sure that they are safe. And I know these people, the spouses, they like carry papers in their wallets. Up. These are the things that they said that I'm not going to do and I'm not going to do that. And I'm going to honor these commitments or um, you did what? Oh, you, you need to go get a room for the night because you're not coming back in this house. And the people who want to work on their relationship, they do. And these people have great marriages now. So it's not impossible. But you have to really think things through and really consider what it will take for you to restore your marriage and if it's healthy for you in the first place. So if you cannot forgive and let go of resentment or if the other person who betrayed you cannot refuses to repair the harm with some serious action, if it's not safe for you spiritually, emotionally, physically, if it's not healthy for you mentally, physically, then you really should consider a gentle way to end your marriage. Because if you try to will it out, yeah, it can technically survive, but it's not going to be good. It's not going to be healthy. And the gifts that you were born with to bring into this world, they won't be as full and as juicy and as wonderful and as life giving to others because life hasn't been poured into you. People were made for relationships, but they weren't made for toxic relationships. So it's okay. It's okay. If you have to leave, you have to end your marriage because it is best for you. 
that is okay. If you need somebody to give you permission, no one can give you permission to do that. You have to give your own self permission. But above all else, take the time you need to make the right decision. Do not rush this decision. But once you know what you need to do, then follow through and file for divorce and get things wrapped up so you can move on with your life. Hey, it was great being here with you guys today. Reach out to me. Meet me in my DMs if you've got questions, if you need assistance. I am more than happy to help. Hope you guys have a wonderful week, and I'll see you next Monday. Bye.